Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one ritzel at a time. And yes, we are back with the man, Jonathan Twomley. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great, Michael. How are you? Oh, man, I'm doing great. Uh, I just lost you for a second. Yeah, you froze for a second. We're good now. Yeah. Okay. My, wi- my wife must be streaming a video or something. I don't know. <laughs> but anyways, uh, you, had it, you had your mastermind, which is a quarterly event, uh, which is a full day of experts coming around, sharing their opinions on whatnot. And I know you had somebody talk about this horrific once in a generation labor shortage. And, um, you know, I just love to hear what you have to say, what your kind of thoughts, because, uh, you know, I have mine, but I'd love to hear what, uh, what your expert uh, brought to the table. Yeah. So, um, so I do for my uh, private coaching program, multifamily launchpad, I put on a quarterly mastermind day where I call in experts to talk about, you know, what's going on with, uh, with multifamily. So this time around we had, um, we have Ryan Severino. He comes back a lot to talk about, and Ryan Severino is the chief economist of Jones Lang Lazell. So he's a guy who obviously understands what's going on. In yeah, real he's estate. in the he's in the data. Yeah. yeah, he goes knows what's going on in real estate, knows the economy. You know, really understands what's going on. Uh, and so I I have him back frequently to kind of update us on where things are. And so we talked about the labor shortage, right? And the you know, so a lot of sort of, I don't know how to say it. Like we've, we've talked about sort of cognitive biases and stuff before. Yeah. I like talking about cognitive biases. These are you know, like people f- get attached to an idea and it interferes with their ability to process data. Right. So, and, and you make all kinds of mistakes. Investors are really prone to these. I mean, everybody's prone to them. Everybody has them. Mm-hmm. Right. So one, one thing that you see is that people, you know, there's a, there's a strong belief out there that the labor shortage is caused by government checks, right? And unemployment benefits being really rich and stimulus checks and things like that. And, you know, last year, people, the government was handing out a lot of money, uh, but those extended unemployment benefits ended quite a while ago. Mm-hmm. And yet p- there's a lot of people still not going back to work or they're not going back to their old jobs, at least. So I wanted to talk to Ryan about sort of where this was coming from. And the really interesting thing that he's now he had a bunch of different explanations for where this is coming from. Mm-hmm. He said, just to dismiss this issue, he said, it's not stimulus money at this point. Like those programs ended a long time ago. It, in the States that ended them early, there's zero difference between the States that ended them early and the States that kept them going longer. Mm. So none of that is no, there's no data to show that other than at the margins, Yeah. Is this affecting anything? This is not the the problem. What he said was really shocking to me. He said, the labor shortage started before COVID. Yeah, that'll take the wind out of your sails. Yeah, he said, the labor labor shortage started before COVID because the number of 18 to 64-year-olds in the United States, this is the prime working years, has the growth has stopped, right? Or the growth has declined. That, the, mm. that pool of people is not growing as fast as the demand for labor is growing, right? So even before COVID started, he said, I don't remember the exact, the exact numbers, so don't, you know, don't get upset if this is wrong. Just, but the idea is, he said it was, there was something like you know, 10 million jobs that were, being, uh, that were on offer before COVID mm. and only 7 million people who were looking for jobs. Right. So this is not a, even if it's nine and seven or whatever, this is not right. new, right? There's a lot of headlines right. today saying, oh my God, we got 10.4 million job openings, but we only got 7.1 million people to work. So that's, that's not new is what Brian this is, is not, saying. this is not, this is not new at all. This was already happening just like as we've, so COVID now has maybe kind of like accelerated this, yes. right? Just as, just as with, you know, sort of, you know, the move to work from home. Yeah. It's the, it's, the it's, millennials buying houses. Yeah, it, yeah. it took existing trends and, and just magnified them. Yeah, bit, amplified, right? magnified. Yes, right. Yes, but yes. it did not cause them. Right. So that's this interesting. Had, this had already, it was already an issue. Then it got kind of swept under the rug, so to speak by COVID because COVID just sort of like masked everything. Cause it just, you know, we had this yeah. like essentially like we just shut down the economy for two months and then, and then started growing after two months again as things started loosening up. But like that, it's, just it's what happened what, then was that then a number of things then contributed to 
the labor shortage because of COVID mm -hmm. or somehow related to COVID. But one is that a certain number of baby boomers just aged into retirement during that right. time. Yeah. Right. Some other number of baby boomers. Now, remember after the great financial crisis, all the baby boomers couldn't retire because their stock portfolios yeah. tanked, their home equity was yeah. gone. Yep. Right. Well, now the opposite has happened. Everybody's yeah. stock portfolio is at a record high. Yeah. Their, their home price, their home equity is at a record high. People are looking around going, oh, I can afford to retire now. Yeah. Right. So that has happened too. Right. Yeah. I actually have a number there. I've been looking at labor shortages for a while. And then the number I saw that was 3.4 million people retired early or above trend. Right. If the trend had continued from 2019, which takes out the 2020, you know, issue, uh, it's 3.4 million above trend. So that's just people retiring early, as you're saying. Yeah. And so and pro probably and then there's something to the thing, you know. A lot of people w went and worked from home and then they realized, like, I don't really like that job that I have. You know, and so yeah. they started looking for other jobs. So it's not like it's not like that they all just said, "Oh, I'm staying home and not working anymore." Yeah, I'm couch all, surfing. Yeah, yeah. All they said is, "I don't want to work for you anymore." I don't want to work like, there. I don't right. want to work there anymore. I don't want to work at that crappy job anymore for yeah. that crappy pay. And so you see a lot of the complaining is like, I mean, some of this stuff. It's all you know. There's anecdotal, but like the thing went viral the other day about the guy who you know was was complaining because he's. You know, I can't. I offered fourteen dollars an hour, and I can't hire anybody. And it's like, well, yeah, because everyone's offering more. Right? Yeah, exactly. Like, you're you're know? the low man. <laughs> yeah. So, like, you know, this is a this is a market economy. Like, you got to pay for you got to pay to pay for it. And, and now, you know, now workers are having the upper hand. The you know the other thing I saw yesterday too that um, I mean it was a little it was a little uh, little like uh, misleading sort of headline, but it, the headline was. 72% of tech workers are intending to change jobs, right? Mm. Now that they now that they can, now that the economy yeah, is better. And so and so the headline was like tech workers and it tech you know, workers revolt. Yeah. Yeah. But then then actually, as you read the article, it actually said 73% of all Americans yeah. are, are looking to quit their jobs and move to a different job right now. So it was kind yeah. of like, oh, the tech industry is well off. It's they got only 72% yeah. yeah. of their employees. <laughs> They're below trend. Quit. Yeah. So they must be doing something right, right? So <laughs> That's um, funny. But I, I think that there's been a big reevaluation yeah. of, of work and that's caused people and people were also, I think, for a long time, especially, you know, they weren't able to change jobs or they yeah, and all these things are related. Right. So like, oh, the yeah. baby boomers retiring and opening and creating more demand. Right. As, as a Gen Xer, like one of the complaints for us has been forever. Like, why don't these people retire? <laughs> Get retire? out of the way. <laughs> yeah. And like open up the top yeah. positions for yeah. us, right? Yeah, I like agree. they're sticking around longer than they should, right? They should have, some yes. of these people should have been retired 10 years ago and they're still sticking around. Like, mm. would they please get out of the way? Well, now they find they are because their stock portfolios are, you know, and also flush, probably yeah. they're flush. And also after not working, they're kind of like, I'm too old for this. I, <laughs> I'm going to retire now, right? So, yeah. so, that, so that's finally opening up some space for, and the only way in, in America the only way that you make more money is to change jobs. Yeah, right? I agree. You do not make money by you, people don't give raises or yeah. the raises they three give or are four like, or five percent or not what you can get 30 percent going somewhere yeah. else. Yeah. So it's the only way to, to increase your pay is to switch jobs and, and ladder up. Right. So now mm -hmm. the space has been created for people to do that. And at the bottom, you know, if your whole if your whole business model is like, I can only make money because I underpay people, but you got to reevaluate your business model at this point. Right. So oh, yeah, it's, you know, you've been living yeah. on borrowed time. Wage, wage inflation is real. Wage inflation is sticky. Once you give it, it's not coming back. It, it, it is the thing that I think ignites inflation across the economy for years to come. But along those lines, mm -hmm. right. If you're a landlord, you love it. Oh right. yeah, no. <laughs> I, believe me, I am. I am excited about wage inflation yeah. because it. I mean, uh, does good things for me. I mean, listen, we've had we've had for years and years and years. All we we've had rent going up, but we haven't had wages going up Agreed. accordingly, which has meant that it's become harder and harder and harder for people to afford to pay rent. Yeah, which means that even if you know, and I certainly experienced this on on C properties, even if they like agreed to pay the rent. And they and and on a on paper, they met 
the qualifications. Yeah, they just for inched rent. over, yeah. Mm-hmm. They couldn't actually afford it because they no. just didn't have the cash, right? And now, if if you're a landlord and you see like this rent growth out there, you should be smacking your lips. And I know a lot of people focus on the negative because they're like, oh, I can't, I got to pay my handyman another two dollars an hour or whatever, and life is no. terrible. Or like, you know, I can't hire somebody because they only want to pay them fifteen bucks and they can make 18. Mm-hmm. Like think about the big picture here. Yeah, right? exactly. Get out of your own way. Yeah. yeah like, like your tenants are now all flush. Yeah. Right. And they're going to be paying your rent and you can raise your rents and like that. So what you pay your, your guy three bucks more an hour. If you're getting, you know, 50 bucks more a month on every apartment you own or a hundred bucks more, you know, on every yeah. apartment you own, like, your and your rent collection hassle goes down, right? Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just all good. So yeah, I think it's wage inflation. Wage inflation is net positive for landlords. Uh, inflation is a tax in my opinion. It hurts the people at the bottom end, but again, we're, we're in a wage cycle. It's going to be very much like the step. Again, people don't realize 1970s wages doubled from 70 to 79 wages, double, almost double 86%. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah. so speaking of, of Ryan Severino, I mean, he mm-hmm. actually made the the point he was like this is not the 1970s okay but tell me he said he's yeah i i I'll have to go back and watch the interview again because it's been a couple of days and i don't remember exactly what he's talking about but essentially he said look there were the the problem with the 1970s was that because of opec mm-hmm. like the inputs to everybody went up like every product and so yeah. that, what that did was it really sort of strangled the economy so you mm-hmm. had like inflation but then it didn't translate into like you know, more productivity or whatever. Right. Like, so okay. he said, this is not the 1970s. He said, we have bottling. The reason he said, the reason that things that we have inflation now is because people are buying so much stuff, right? Ah, it's like okay. they, every people didn't buy anything for 18 months, right? A lot of people were, were like out of work or even if they were getting unemployment benefits, mm-hmm. they were, you know, it wasn't enough with all the talk of like, you know, these rich benefits and stuff like, but he said, people were not spending money or they were bank, they were worried. So they were banking their money, right? The savings mm-hmm. rate went up. We've oh, talked yeah, about that before, sure. right? Now people are feeling like, Oh, okay. I can go back to work. I can actually get a better high paying job. And I've got all these saving the savings now and I'm life is stuff, good <laughs> and I'm buying stuff now. Right. And so that has, you know, people, the demand for products is so high right now that that's part of what the problem is. But then you combine that at the same time with stuff like, well, the dock workers are like, Hey, I don't don't have to go back to that job. I'm going somewhere else. Right. And so you've got these bottlenecks in the economy that are going to take time to to work out. Right. But he said, that's the issue. It's not, you know, people talking about stagflation. I mean, they just, they just don't have it right. Like this is not stagflation. This is this is a demand side driven inflation, not which is healthy, not supply side driven mm-hmm. inflation, which is which is problematic. So that was that was reassuring too. That yeah, I would love not, to see that. It's uh, I, I there's so many similarities at least on paper with the 70s, but maybe it's um, kind of different inputs kind of causing the same early behavior. It'll be fun to watch. So uh, how can people find you? Where do you want them to go? Yeah. So uh, if you would like to uh, join my community and learn more about multifamily directly from me, you can go to the multifamily investment community on Facebook. Uh, just fill out the questions that you're asked and uh, I'll let you in. And if you want to invest with me, go to Two Bridges Management. That's Two Bridges spelled out MGMT for management, or you can just Google Two Bridges Asset Management LLC and you can find the investor page and get yeah. on my list. Very cool. Do yourself a favor, check them out. Look at his past deals, get a part of his uh, investor letters or uh, groups. That would be great. Thanks, Jonathan. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you.